Permanent Ink by Maxine on AO3. Chapter 23 They had their own bedrooms at Endeavor's agency. Not that Katsuki had forgotten, but it hadn't really been a big deal before. It was still hardly a big deal now, aside from the fact that Deku was currently standing in said room, cheeks a tad flushed as he looked around, and Katsuki was abruptly struggling with being hyper aware of the fact that there were no parents here demanding they keep the door open. He tried to reel himself in, tried not to let his mind light up with the idea, or even acknowledge this opportunity they've been practically fucking gifted with. This wasn't some kind of excuse for an erotic getaway. They were here to work. Besides, it was already late since they'd taken their time messing around at the arcade earlier, so Katsuki was honestly ready to crawl into bed at this point. He wanted to kick his work study off the bank, fresh and rejuvenated, from the days they've had away from school. They didn't necessarily have to be anywhere in the morning, though. The original plan had been for them to arrive in the afternoon, so technically they were still on summer break until then, but Katsuki had been prepared to get back to his usual routine, which meant dragging himself out of bed at the crack of dawn for maybe like 8am or something, he could ease into it, and hitting the gym. Deku turned up at his door was throwing a not necessarily unwanted wrench into things, but the rational side of Katsuki's brain had apparently already packed its bags because he hadn't hesitated in letting the boy in. He also didn't hesitate in shutting the door behind him because he was a fucking idiot and 17 years old. And this was his goddamn boyfriend, all right? So whatever, he was allowed. Uh, sorry to uh, barge in on you, Deku said after the silence between them had lingered for a moment. He shifted his face to Katsuki's hand, clasped behind his back, and Katsuki just sort of squinted at him. Dumbass, he said after a moment, the corners of his mouth tugging upwards. You knocked, politely. Pretty sure that doesn't count as barging. Deku gave him a sheepish grin. I figured I'd come say goodnight. Okay. Katsuki arched his eyebrows, a teasing lit coloring his tone. Good night, then. That got a blink, then a small scowl as Deku's brows furled, which most likely just made Katsuki feel even more amused. Kachan! What? He leaned one shoulder up against the wall and let his smirk stretch wider. You wanted to say good night, so good night, nerd. Deku huffed his cheeks, rolling out with it. Fine, fine, I guess I'll just leave then, he said, loudly and accomplished by an eye roll. He started marching his way back towards the door, but Katsuki was quick to reach out and snag his wrist, snickering as he pulled Deku back towards him. As fucking if, he said, his other hand shaking behind Katsuki's back. Deku slumped up right against him seeming to fit right into place as he wrapped his free arm around Katsuki's waist. After I went through all the trouble of showing up and everything, Deku murmured, I had to walk all the way down the hall. Katsuki snorted. What a journey. He let go of Deku's wrist, instead reaching up to brush against some stray curls back from his temple. Guess I shouldn't be a rude host, huh? You? Rude? Deku tipped his chin up. Impossible! Unheard of! You would never! Yeah, alright. We all know that's bullshit. Katsuki murmured, before grinning as he leaned in to interrupt Deku's snickers with a kiss. He maneuvered the other boy's back until he could press him up against the wall, and Deku made a sort of please sort of sound that instantly had his heart dropping low in Katsuki's gut. He'd heard all sorts of noises coming out of that mouth before. Laughs and yells and mumbling, everything ranging from excited to soft to fire up in the heat of battle, not to mention the endless amount of rambling nonsense. But that, that was new. He wanted more of it. 
Natsuki found himself pushing at the back of Deku's thin t-shirt, no real goal in mind, other than the need to touch and feel. His fingers spread across warm skin at the small of Deku's back, and Deku gasped against him, his own hand slightly beneath Katsuki's shirt to palm his waist. Deku's hands were big. What the fuck? Katsuki knew he was pretty narrow around the middle, but he hadn't ever given it much thought before. Suddenly, though, he felt almost small. He still had the height advantage and wasn't petite or some shit by any means. But he was almost certain those hands would be able to manhandle him any fucking way they please. He wasn't particularly adverse to the idea. It sort of made his head spin, actually. But before he could get too caught up in his own rapidly spiraling thoughts, there was a knock at the door. Because of course there was. Katsuki was content enough to ignore it, too busy diving in for another deep kiss. But the knock came again, and Deku squeezed at his way briefly before pushing him slightly back. You should answer that, he said, panting a little. And Katsuki flashed hot all over the realization that he had done that to him, literally made him lose his breath. Not that he was any better off, to be honest, but still. Fuck, the door. Not important, it could wait, Katsuki murmured, already leaning back in, and Deku was halfway to meeting him, but whoever the hell it was knocked again, and Katsuki was forced to rip himself away from the snarl. God damn it, it's late. Who the fuck? He complained spinning around and stomping over to yank the door open. Todoroki blinked at him from the other side. Katsuki stared at him for a beat or two and then promptly slammed the door shut again, which had Deku snorting seemingly before he could stop himself. See, not important, Katsuki said, knowing full well he was going to have to open the damn door again, like five seconds. If we ignore him, he'll just go away. Hachan. The knock came again, even more insistently this time, and Katsuki heaved a deep sigh before once again pulling the door open. What the fuck do you want, Icy Hot? Sorry, I didn't think you would be busy, Todoroki repeated blankly. It's late. He leaned slightly to the side, looking past Katsuki. Hi, Midoriya. Deku lit out an awkward laugh, bubbling up from his throat. <laughs> Hey, Todoroki. I know what time it is, Katsuki said, drawing Todoroki's attention back. Which is why, I don't know why, you'd bother me right now. Half and half frowned a bit, looking almost offended. Midoriya's bothering you? Which, wow. Wow. Katsuki could only stare at him again. Are you fucking, he's allowed, you moron. Ah, Deku said, somewhere behind him, and Katsuki just briefly refrained from slamming the, his face into the door jam. Seemingly unfair, Todoroki murmured, which damn near had Katsuki exploding him because he deserved it, frankly. But the other boy continued before he could lift a hand to blow his damn face up. I wanted to know if you were going to the gym in the morning. Katsuki's eyes narrowed. Is that it? Yes. And you couldn't have asked me, oh, <laughs> I don't know, in the morning? Well, no, Todoroki said. Because at that point, we'd either would or wouldn't be at the gym already. You've got to be shitting me. Katsuki grumbled, and Deku quickly stepped forward, reaching out to hook his arm around Katsuki's elbow. Do you have off tomorrow, too? He asked Todoroki. Only until the afternoon, same as you two. We're meeting with Vernon at four. Oh, that's plenty of time. Deku tipped his head, looking at Katsuki. You want to? Deku and his casual touches were going to be the death of Katsuki. Probably. He huffed out an annoyed breath. I was going anyways. You could have said that. I see hot murmured. I was going to go alone. Too bad. Todoroki glanced back and forth between him and Deku. What time? 
Uh, first thing, Deku suggested. Or he darted a quick look in Katsuki's direction. How about around nine? Katsuki stubbornly pretended that his cheeks going warm just then wasn't a thing that was happening. And he definitely was not thinking about how well Deku knew him and how that made something in his stomach go all fluttery. I was thinking if we went early, then we could go back to the arcade for lunch, Todoroki said. And Bakugo can teach me how to dance? The fuck I can? Katsuki blurted out immediately, in a way that was almost alarmed. I don't dance. What? Todoroki's eyebrows hiked up. DDR, Dance Dance Revolution. It's right in the name, remember? We were playing earlier. As if he'd forgotten in the past hour or something. Good fucking god. That's not actual dancing, Katsuki scowled folding his arms across his chest even though Deku still had his free hand resting on the crook of his elbow. That's a test of coordination. It's basically fucking training. Fine, then you can train me, Todoroki said, sounding just the slightest bit impatient. You were really good, and it was annoying. You're annoying, Katsuki shot back, stuck somewhere between toughness and the stupid-ass urge to go at being competitive. Ugh. Oh my god, Deku murmured. He used his hold on Katsuki to halt himself closer, pushing up against his toes so that he could press a kiss on Katsuki's cheek. Apparently, Todoroki standing right there wasn't much of a difference for him. Katsuki, meanwhile, knew he just turned a mortifying shade of how the hell does one do PDA strawberry red. I'm going to bed. His mortification could wait. Katsuki snapped his head around and found himself reaching out to snag the bottom of Deku's shirt before he could back away. Already? Deku blinked at him. A slow smile curled his lips. Yeah, it's late. Not that late, he murmured, even though it was hours past his usual bedtime and he was supposed to be getting himself back on schedule. You'd be happier if we don't keep you up, Deku said with a laugh. Debatable, honestly, but Deku just leaned in to kiss him properly this time, and Katsuki went with it because, like, fucking, what was he gonna do? Let the awkwardness of half and half just standing there make him stop? It was a chast thing anyways. It was just a quick shared warm that Katsuki wanted to chase after when Deku pulled back. Night, Kachan. Uh, Todoroki, see you in the morning. He slipped past the other boy and ambered off down the hallway, leaving Todoroki and Katsuki to stare impatiently at each other for a moment. Eventually, though, the corners of Todoroki's mouth tugged up into a smirk. Your face. Okay, if murder was committed tonight, it would absolutely not be Katsuki's fault. Fuck off, he snarled and slammed the door shut for the final time that night. To Todoroki's credit, that little that Katsuki was willing to give him, he was actually very careful about how often he let himself be included in evening hangouts over the next couple weeks. Each night he tagged along seemed to be pointless, followed by the night that he was able to have private time, and Katsuki found himself grudgingly appreciating his thoughtfulness. But honestly, it was a period of adjustment for both him and Deku, of learning how to be together while also juggling their dedication to their begrudging careers, not to mention the consistent close proximity without the rest of their classmates and specifically social circles around to distract them. There were some nights that Katsuki was simply done being around people for the day, when he wanted to do nothing more than collapse into bed after a grindling patrol rather than hang out with annoying anyone at all. And he had to figure out how to balance the conflicting urges of wanting to be near Deku while also wanting to be holed up in his room alone. Deku, for the most part, didn't seem to mind when Katsuki wasn't in the mood for company. But that didn't mean there was also time when he sheepishly showed up at the Katsuki's door anyway. He understood, but persistent in a way that reminded Katsuki of their younger years, when he first started to try to push Deku away, only for the boy to stubbornly trail after him. 
Natsuki wasn't that brat anymore, though. He wanted Deku around. So they learned how to be in each other's spaces on both good and the bad days. Sometimes, Katsuki found that he could just quietly be together with Deku aimlessly pondering around on his laptop while Katsuki read or did stretches or even popped his headphones on and listened to music. And other times, the privacy they were allowed became a smudge too tempting and he ended up letting Deku and his wandering hands press him back onto one of their beds, which was exactly as overwhelming and stomach flipping, flopping, and good as Katsuki had once dared to imagine it might be. Back when he was still figuring out how to do any of the physical shit with Kaminari, they'd gradually found rhythm. Actually going out on anything that might qualify it as a date was a thing they never really had time for. But Katsuki would occasionally take over the kitchens that Endeavor's agency offered and cook dinner for the two of them. Three, if... Todoroki showed up, but that was rare after Katsuki had shoved his take on Hoki Ramen at him without warning and gleefully watched as he accidentally almost turned the entire fucking diner area into the North Pole, trying to cool his mouth down. And Deku was already ready with an old superhero movie or All Might documentary for them to watch. Or a random ass card game to play, apparently which was what they were doing one night a few days into their work studies. They were in Deku's room, sitting across from each other on his bed and throwing cards down in a pile between them with increasing speed, each with a sort of intense, focused look on their faces that was usually reserved for when they were sparring each other across the sparring mats. And then, at the same time, abrupt moment, they both slapped a hand down on the pile. Ha! Katsuki's crowded. Mine. Suck it, Deku. No way, Deku growled, sliding his hand forward to shove Katsuki's. I'm covering the whole pile. My finger's under yours. Kachan, it's not. Mine, Katsuki repeated, and Deku relented with a huff. Katsuki grinned as he began gathering up the cards to add them to his stack. Don't pout at me. They're your rules. I don't think the tip of your finger being under mine counts, Deku grumbled. Katsuki just shrugged. I got there faster, come on. I still gotta kick your ass. You're nowhere near close to beating me. Yet. They began tossing cards down again, one after the other, until Deku smacked his hands so hard against the pile that Katsuki was convinced he wouldn't have gotten a few bones snapped had he tried to go for it as well. Sandwich, Deku cried. Eight, six, eight. Katsuki cursed, giving Deku the stink eye as he curled and gathered up the cards. Hurry up. So impatient, Deku said, looking way too smug and drawing a growl from Katsuki's throat. They started again, flipping their cards, adding to the pile faster and faster, and they were both struck lightning fast as they threw down double threes. Fuck! Katsuki burst out when Deku's hand landed before his. Deku broke into laughter and Katsuki drove forward onto him, splattering the cards between them and making Deku yelp as he tipped over backwards onto his pillow. He started giggling all over again when Katsuki pinned him down and unceremoniously blew a raspberry into the curve of his neck. Stop! Kachan! <laughs> Deku tried to swarm away still stuck laughing and trying to catch his breath. But Katsuki raked his hand down Deku's side before he could go anywhere, and that just made him laugh even louder. You're this cheating. Katsuki finally let up and plopped down against Deku's heaving chest, barely giving him time to recover before he wrapped him up in bruising kiss. Say I won, he said when he pulled back. And Deku snorted out another breathless chuckle before stubbornly shaking his head. Heck no, why would I lie? I almost won. Natsuki folded his arm across Deku's pecs, resting his chin on top of them. Deku just arced his eyebrows at him. You weren't even close, and you didn't let us finish. Tch. He settled himself more comfortably, one leg wedged between Deku's. Honestly, he could probably fall asleep here. 
had more important things to do. Deku hummed at that, dropping his hand down to comb through Katsuki's hair. His phone pinged from somewhere beside him and padded around on the mattress until he found it, but only glanced at the screen before letting it fall to the bed again. Who's that? Katsuki asked. Not important, Deku murmured, but then someone knocked on his door and Katsuki gave him a pointed look. Sure it wasn't Icy Hot asking if he could come annoy the crap out of us? It wasn't, Deku insisted. Katsuki made a disbelieving sound and rolled off him, starfishing across the comforter while Deku pushed himself up on his elbows. It's opened, he called. Sorry, Todoroki said the second he stepped into view, looking so slightly frazzled. I'll be quick, I just need help. He was staring down at his phone, so Deku was clearly a fucking liar. You need more than that, Katsuki said. Admittedly, though, anything other than boring deadpan on half and half and his potential to be half interesting. So, he didn't bother telling him to get the hell out. Deku hauled himself into a sitting position. Everything okay? Yes, Todoroki said, but then frowned. No. Should I ask Yoyozu out? Again? Oh, fucking hell. Katsuki groaned. That's still a thing? I don't know. Todoroki sounded frustrated. That's why I'm asking you. You sure she's not with ears? Kachan! Deku hissed, but Todoroki just shook his head. She's not? Deku whipped back around to stare at him, and Katsuki actually bothered to sit up finally. How do you know? Icy Hawk gave a tiny shrug. I asked her. Holy shit. You asked her? Deku repeated, eyes wide. Was I not supposed to? No, I mean, I guess it's fine. Deku glanced at Katsuki. But like, fuck, he knew what the different dating protocols were. Pretty ballsy, he said. Could be your opening. So that's a yes, Todoroki said. I should ask her on a date? Katsuki scrawled. I don't fucking know, it's your life. Do you like her? Deku asked, more gently. Of course I like her. Todoroki paused for a beat, then groaned and flaced panted onto the mattress in between Deku and Katsuki, who promptly scrunched their noses up and scooted a few inches away. I just don't know if I like her. He continued, voice muffled. For fuck's sakes, Katsuki grumbled. I don't know the difference. How are you supposed to tell? He groaned again and rolled over, staring moistly up at the ceiling. Is dating someone supposed to be hard? Is dating someone supposed to be this damn hard? In my experience, yes, Katsuki said, mostly to be an ass. Todoroki's gaze slipped over to him, eyes narrowed. Please, you waltzed up to Kaminari and asked him to make out with you, and then got handed a soulmate on a silver platter. Katsuki spurted in dignity at that, flaring a look across at Deku, who immediately flushed and started flailing a little. You said I could tell him. How the fuck did anything with Kaminari come up? You said I could tell him everything. He thought you were dating anyways. Or knew you were dating? He huffed. Eyebrows drawn down a tiny bit. Or whatever the whole thing ended up being. Some part of Katsuki absently wondered if Deku's slightly jealous. That he refused to admit to whatever would not be amusing. The rest of him was too busy shooting eye daggers at his stupid boyfriend. Ballsy, Todoroki drawled, and Katsuki swiftly directed his glare at him instead. Icy Hot ignored him and exhaled a long-suffering sigh. I like being her friend. She's smart and really pretty and strong. Gross, Katsuki murmured. Majoria got to kiss her once, and I had this insane urge to set his hair on fire. Deku promptly choked on nothing. Todoroki, why? 
Half and half blinked and then seemed to realize his mistake, slowly peering at Katsuki. Ah, sorry. What? Fucking seriously? Katsuki darted his wide eyes back and forth between the two of them, and Deku winced. What the f- Are you- How many people have you kissed, Deku? I'm sorry? Deku cried, shuffling forward towards him, except Todoroki was in the way, so he didn't get all the way across the bed. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I honestly forgot about that one. Yeah? Katsuki jabbed a finger down at Todoroki. Did you also forget you kissed this fucker twice? Kachan, those games were so long ago. Deku cut himself off abruptly then blinked and glanced back at Todoroki. Was it twice? I think so, Todoroki said with a shrug, and Katsuki really seriously wanted to strangle him. When did you two even talk about that? Deku asked, exasperated. Katsuki threw his arms up. Before we got here, he needed to know I wanted to punch him in the face. Todoroki chose that moment to shoot up and twist around to face Katsuki which made him jerk backwards, startled from the sudden attention. But before he could say anything or even begin to register what the hell was about to happen, Todoroki was clasping his hands around Katsuki's cheeks and lurching forward to smash the world's biggest, unwanted, goddamn, fucking, icy hot, motherfucker, fuck, kiss against his mouth. It only lasted approximately one-tenth of a second, and he was quick to let go. But it didn't matter, Katsuki was already yelping and pinwheeling his arms illegibly as he flung himself straight back off the edge of the bed and crashing to the floor. There, Todoroki said, with the roll of his eyes. Now you're even. I will fucking kill you! Katsuki rolled, scrambling back up to onto the bed, his palms sparkling, and Deku had gone red and had his hands clasped in front of his mouth, as if that would magically stop the sounds of spattering laughter from bleeding through. Looking extremely unconcerned, which was just all more infuriating, half and half pushed himself up to stand. I guess I will ask her. Don't fucking ignore me, asshole. Katsuki shot Deku another glare for good measure, too. Are you... Seriously? Laughing right now? I'm sorry. <laughs> Deku gasped out, still crackling the fuck up, apparently. Fucking dick. He practically had tears streaming down his cheeks. What the hell? Oh my god, I didn't think he would do that. And the way you just fell? <laughs> he wheezed, more giggles tumbling from his mouth. Katsuki harumphs. Okay, well, fuck you too. To hell with this. I'm gonna call her Yurushi Hiroshi and see if he wants to make out. That set Deku off all over again, but Todoroki just wrinkled his nose up in a vague, confused sort of way. Who the hell is this Yurushi Hiroshi? Deku's junior high boyfriend, Katsuki snarled. Kachan! Deku clutched his stomach as his laughter finally started to dial down. Shit, I can't breathe. He was my junior high school project partner one time. And yet Bakugo knows his full name? Taroki noted. Do you actually want to die? Katsuki demanded, lifting his hands up again. Pass, thanks. Taroki, Deku said. You should ask Yayurozu out. Just the two of you. The last couple of times were group dates. You should try being with her on her own. Ah, he rubbed the back of his neck, a dustling pink rising across his cheeks. That makes sense. Yeah. If it doesn't work out, you could still be friends, Deku continued earnestly, giving a bright smile. I'm sure you'll be fine either way. Maybe. Todoroki turned to face them. Thanks. Sorry for interrupting, uh... He gestured towards the ruffled comforter. Whatever you were doing with the cards. Which were fucking everywhere now. Deku had a couple stuck to his arm. 
Katsuki was pretty sure there was one mysteriously inside the back of his shirt. Aisiha arched an eyebrow at them. Stripper poker? Get the fuck out, Katsuki finally said. Voice flat, and Todoroki just snorted before doing as told. As soon as the door closed behind him, Katsuki immediately scrubbed a hand across his mouth. Ugh, that piece of shit. Where the hell does he get off? Deku snickered, reaching out to wrap both his arms around Katsuki so that he could bury his face against his shoulders. I can't believe he actually kissed you. Right? Fuck. You should be pissed. I'm not pissed. Why not? Katsuki demanded. Because it was funny, Deku said, simply grinning up at him. Bastard. Katsuki stuck his tongue out and dragged the back of his hand over it like he was trying to rub away shitty Todoroki germs that definitely had not gotten anywhere near the inside of his mouth. He froze my tongue. He did not freeze your tongue. He barely even touched you. It's frozen, Katsuki insisted. Unfreeze it for me, nerd. He threw his weight against Deku, sending him toppling backwards onto the mattress, amidst more pearls of laughter. You're actually such a dork. Did you know that? Teku said, threading his fingers back into Katsuki's hair. Katsuki scoffed, but Deku just tugged him down to get help meddling all the nonsense ice away. Those were Katsuki's favorite kind of nights, when he wasn't exhausted and his social meter hadn't dipped to negative levels, and he could just let himself get wrapped up in everything that Deku was. When the surprise of how easy that all was had finally faded, and instead he could get lost in how much fun they were able to have together. On the days they weren't patrolling, and never often had them training exercises at the agency's massive gym, he still somehow pulled Todoroki out of his own, too, and left Katsuki and Deku to do drills under the watchful eyes of Burnin. Katsuki used to get annoyed whenever Endeavor pulled that kind of shit. He was doing his work study, with the current number one hero for a reason, goddammit. But, and truthfully, didn't happen that often anymore. And besides, it turned out there was a whole unexpected thing he and Deku needed time to adjust for. Fighting alongside your soulmate was weird. He sort of had an inkling. His parents had mentioned the whole sense bullshit thing before. That he'd be able to feel Deku or whatever the fuck. Hell, even Deku had been able to tell when Katsuki just arrived at his house for that family dinner, even if he hadn't realized it at the time. He said it felt like Katsuki was there. Katsuki had always had an excellent instinct in the field. He knew what was going on around him and had learned over the course of his time at UA how to work fairly seamlessly with most of all his classmates. Deku had already been one step above the others anyways. Once Katsuki had gotten over his damn self in the first year, it had been humiliating realization to learn just how well he and Deku complemented each other in a fight. Now, though, it felt like he had a fucking tracking system locked on the other boy. Deku's presence buzzed around him perimeously constantly, and it was taking some getting used to. He could see how it would be useful, though. He could... Embrace their partnership and make them even more powerful team once they became pros. Any added advantage was something worth embracing and figuring out. He was jolted down some notes one night when a training session, alone in his room for the moment, when his phone buzzed. Katsuki glanced over in case it was Deku or his parents or something and then paused. Round face's name flashed across the screen. Uderaka? The fuck? He let it buzz for another few seconds, just staring, then finally huffed out a breath and picked it up. The hell do you want? Oh, wow, you actually answered. I didn't think you'd ever called me before. Katsuki tossed his pencil down and sat back in his desk, letting it tip backwards onto two legs. Figured someone might be dying? You know, you'd be really bad if that ended up being the case. Uraraka said dryly, and Katsuki snorted to pite himself. How's your work studies going? Cut the shit, round face. I'm not doing small talk over the phone with you. What do you want? Uraraka humped, paused for a moment, and then sighed. 
All right, fine. I wanted to, um, shoot, she said, diggering for a couple seconds, almost long enough for Katsuki to snap at her again, and then suddenly she blurted. Is Deku upset with me? Katsuki blinked. Huh? He's barely answering my texts. She continued in a rush. Sometimes it's a day before I hear anything, and it's always something short, and he's never short, and he's mad, isn't he? Katsuki thought back to the few times recently he'd seen Deku's phone ping with a text that he didn't bother to answer. Okay, so, not icy hot then? Fuck, he should have been nosier about it. I didn't think he was still doing that shit. He replied, eventually, and Uraraka sighed again on the other end of the line. So, that's a yes, then. Maybe. Why are you bugging me about it? You should talk to him. That probably needs to be in-person conversation, honestly. Great, Kazuki said flatly. Glad you worked that out. Can I go? What? No, that's not why I called Bakugo. Well, the fuck? Spill it out already. Ugh, you're such a jerk. I wanted to apologize. That drew Katsuki up short for a moment before he rolled his eyes. Apologizing to me ain't gonna get you any brownie points with him. That's not why I'm doing it, she insisted. They're two different things. I I didn't mean to ask about him that just... Anyways, I'm, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. I went off that day. I shouldn't have... Katsuki slumped down in the seat, glorying at nothing in particular. Awkwardly. This was fucking awkward. Now, great. It's fine. It's not fine. I was embarrassed, and I was hurt, and probably just still sore over him breaking up with me. Probably. Katsuki interrupted, snorting. Can you not? Uraraka shot back at him. Please, I mean it. I'm really sorry. I never should have used my quirk on you like that, no matter how I was feeling. Okay, jeez, I get it. He grimaced, reaching up to print the bridge of his nose. Fucking hell. I shouldn't have yelled in front of everyone either. All right, God, don't we gotta rehash the whole thing? Sorry, she mumbled. It wasn't my finest moment. I really did not give a shit. Katsuki tipped his head back, absently rocking his chair back and forth. You and Deku keep blowing this thing up, and it isn't that big of a deal. Uraraka humps a little. He's obviously thought it was. He got all bent out of shape, but there's a whole lot of unrelying shit in that. You got crap luck, too. He was already dealing with... Todoroki and Kirishima being weird about it, and then you came along and happened to be the loudest. Kirishima? Uraraka repeated. Really? Yeah, newsflash, I suck, and he's a decent guy. He was sort of shocked when I told him everything. You don't suck. There was a beat of silence, and then, much, anymore. Katsuki barked out a laugh. Yeah, okay. Deku sees something in you, at least. Sure, but he's a weird nerd, Katsuki said, a little too fondly. He quickly cleared his throat. Listen, round face, Uraraka, I get it, okay? Those two months when I knew and, and you were still dating him, I don't know why the fuck I would have said, but I should have said something. Uraraka was silent for a moment, and Katsuki let it linger, trying not to let his unusual patience get to him. Thank you, she murmured, eventually, and then a little of that faint spark endeared her voice again. You don't get to turn this around, though. This is my apology. The corner of Katsuki's mouth pulled up into a smirk, not that anyone was around to see. I can meet you halfway, he said, and then, more quietly, Seriously, Danao was my fucking best friend back then. I'm sorry you got caught up in that. Okay, Uraraka replied. Okay, enough of that. You're sorry, I'm more sorry, and I still need to sort things out with your boyfriend. God, what a mess. Boyfriend? Kasuki droned. Did he actually come out and say that? 
No, but the pictures from your hike certainly screamed it, Uraraka said dryly, and Katsuki instantly scrawled. God, that damn picture. I'm never going to hear the end of it. He posted it in our f group chat. Yeah, I was there when he did it, and then Icy Hot was fucking thrilled to remind me again later, Katsuki grumbled. Uraraka giggled a bit. I think Ida hasn't figured it out. He told me that too. Right. Well, um, thank you for actually picking up. Are we okay? Were we okay even without this bullshit? I wasn't, Uraraka said. I didn't like how I acted. Katsuki refrained from groaning. Yeah, I got it. Apology accepted or whatever. Thanks, Bakugo. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Hey. He interrupted, suddenly, and Uraraka paused. Question. Yes? You're not just rebounding with Saro, are you? Not that Katsuki cared, except that, you know, that idiot was one of his friends, so... Oh, I was absolutely rebounding with Saro, Uraraka replied, without missing a beat, and Katsuki frowned. He knew that? He, he practically offered to be a rebound guy. Again, that stupid idiot was somehow one of Katsuki's goddamn friends. Holy shit, why had he suffered himself with such morons? Before he could say anything, Realm Face kept speaking. But, you know, funny enough, it turns out I actually really, really like him. Leaf washed over Katsuki startlingly fast. Thank fuck. So he has successfully launched himself out of the rebind guy pool, Uraraka continued. Katsugi let his chair drop back down on all fours and leaned against to rest his forehead against the surface of his desk. Good, he murmured. He just, he's nice, you know, and he's really funny. Plus, I think our quirks really work well together and his hero costume. Oh my god, was I blind before? That thing hugs him like... Wow, fuck. I'm gonna hang up. Katsuki cut in, sitting up against and making a face. Go take a cold shower or something, jeez. You asked. Not for details, he complained. It's fucking gross. Get off my phone already, goddammit. Alright, alright. Night, Bakugo. He didn't bother responding. Just hanged up and tossed the phone over onto his desk. Almost the second he did... Behind him, he heard his bedroom door creak open and glanced over to see Deku poking his head in. Are you done? Katsuki let out an amused snort. What, were you just lurking in the hallway? I heard you talking to someone. Deku stepped behind him. You didn't notice I was there. I wasn't. Katsuki flipped his hands a bit. Trying to feel you. Or whatever we fucking call that. I, I was kind of distracted. Deku hummed and digged down to drape his arms over Katsuki's shoulders. Who was that? Katsuki hesitated for a moment. He considered not telling him, but... Uraraka, he said. Just the slightest bit cautious, but overall, frank. He felt Deku tense up and reached up to curl his fingers around one of Deku's wrists. Still mad, huh? She called you about that? Deku asked, sidestepping the question. No, it just came up briefly. Why'd she call then? To talk. Deku frowned. Is that even something you two do? To talk about Saro, Katsuki clarified. There was a misgirly nudget of tooth in the blatant lie, at least. He tugged at Deku's wrist, pulling into Deku circled the chair, and dropped sideways onto his lap. Katsuki snaked his arm around him. Whatever, it doesn't matter. How long this gonna last? I'm not mad anymore, Deku said, mumbling. I just... I can't just let it go either. I never even told her I was mad, but I guess she figured it out. Something about the extreme absence for long rambling texts clued her in, Katsuki said, dryly and Deku groaned a little sheepishly before it faded again. <laughs> Did you tell her why? Katsuki shook his head. Nah, that's between you two. I wanted to talk to her about it. 
let her know I don't need her jumping in my defense like that. But also, the sentiment was... something? Deku scrunched his nose up, looking uncertain. I don't know, I feel like it needs to be an in-person conversation. I didn't want to stumble through that on the phone. Ha, go figure. Katsuki huffed out a sort of laugh, leaning back against his chair and coding Deku to settle against his jacks. Smart. Sounds like a good plan to me. Think she'll be upset with me taking so long? I think you're both eerily similar nerds, Katsuki said, and reached up to grasp Deku's chin and pulled him in for a kiss are going to sort this shit out. I guess that counts as supportive vote for confidence? Deku grumbled, somewhat penditively. Katsuki just grinned and kissed him again. This was such a cute, like, chapter. It was so cute and adorable. We have two chapters left. I don't know what's going to happen in those two chapters. I feel like if we ended thing, I think we'll actually, I think it's going to be Uraraka and um, Deku apologizing and you know, becoming friends again. Um, but yeah, predictions, that's gonna happen next chapter. No, I, actually, I think that might be the end. No, that's gonna happen next chapter, and then the last chapter is probably gonna be like a jump skip or something. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. This is my first time reading it. I'm reading it with you guys. Um, but talking about chapters, two more chapters and we're done. Two more chapters. That is insane. Okay, so, um, I thought about it for a while, and, uh, what I'm gonna do is... You guys are going to get a chapter tomorrow, and then you guys are going to get a chapter Thursday. And Friday starts the new series. I think you guys are going to like this series. I'm going to give you a little bit of hints to get you guys hyped up. Uh, so the first hint is superheroes, powers, but it's not My Hero Academia. Superheroes, powers, but it's not My Hero Academia. And another hint you guys are going to get is uh, found family. You guys get two hints today. You get three hints tomorrow. And then you get told Thursday what it's going to be, basically. As always, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds, have a wonderful day or night, join our community Discord server, link is in the description, subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.